Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we do watercolor tutorials, well I teach them, and a new one every week. And we're doing dandelions Aww. today. And we have Keenan filming with me. Oh, I'm here. It's been so long. Who are you even? I don't know. I don't know who I've you changed. are. I've <laughs> changed so, so much. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. we are going to be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to lightly sketch our designs. This is a loose project, but we're doing basic shapes here, so do not let the drawing aspect stress you out. You guys can do this. Step number two, we're gonna paint around our flowers or our dandelions that we draw out, because this is a negative space painting, which means we paint around our subject to define our subject. This is exciting. It I, is pretty I exciting. love negative space paintings. They're pretty fun. They are. Um, step number three is we are going to put in the, um, like, the, uh, the, the center of the dandelion yeah, and it. the color behind around it and the leaves. So we're going to put color in some of the areas that we've been leaving white. Step number four, we're going to do our little flyaways. You know how dandelions wisp off? Those are seeds. Oh, yeah, the seeds. The seeds. I feel like... Because they're just a weed. That's like they're in They're a beautiful weed. They are. And they grant wishes. Like in, uh, what is that Disney? Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast. We Oh, we may have done something with Beauty and the Beast before. Chris, Michael, who's ever editing this? See if you can find that little clip of the dandelion seeds when Belle is singing <laughs> yeah. that she wants more out of this life. Right? Isn't yeah, that the song? I think, I think it's the song. She's on a hill. Yeah. Oh, I wish I can remember the words because I would start singing. You it. were about to start. I'll look it up. You saw my face. I was I about told to you start were ready. singing. You had air I was ready. ready to go. I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I interrupted it. I feel like we are talking a yep. lot. We I'm haven't really even sorry. gone through all the I'm steps. I'm so sorry. Can you tell we haven't filmed in a while? Because we're like, Keenan, how has the last three months been? <laughs> I mean, I haven't filmed since January. <laughs> okay. And the last step is just going in and doing some details if we need to do details. So let's do our oath and then warm ups and then we'll do our painting. But before we do our oath, I'm using a round six and a round two. We named these brushes. This is Keenan <laughs> and this is Brock. So these are our two paint brushes. Oh, They're Let's Make Art so round six, funny. round two. They're similar to the Princeton Heritage series. Um, so if you have those Princeton brushes, those will work great as well. Use whatever brushes you have. Um, and we are using three colors in this. So we are using sea blue, which is a gorgeous, like turquoise color blue. I love it. That's a great color. We are using lemon yellow. And we are using bleed proof white, which you probably won't be able to see here because that is a white piece of paper that I just painted on. It's like a reflection. A little yes. bit of a reflection. A little bit of a water there. Okay. Water. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. And funny thing, Kate and I just went downstairs to film and we, we, we ran into someone who paints with us. Oh yeah. Her name was Megan. She came with her family. Our store isn't open, but we were able to say hi. Yep. It was really great. They got to see the studio. Yeah. We they were them. not as impressed with it as they <laughs> thought they were going to be. <laughs> They're like, oh. She's like, this, this is where you film. <laughs> I don't blame her. If you guys have seen yeah. what's around us instead of just rough. this. You know what? It's fine. But I, it was really exciting because she gave this to me for her girls. She illustrated this book. That and she is said, super cool. Isn't that cool? And she, she said, she showed me some of her pencil portraiture. She's extremely talented. But she said all of her watercoloring she learned through Let's Make Art. So I just thought it was so great. And she's been painting with us for... She said say, she started in 2018 at the end of the year, yeah. I think. So almost since the beginning. Yeah, that's cool. So anyways, very cool. It's pretty exciting. I love being able to meet and talk with you guys. Again, we're not open. It really was just like a freak accident yeah, that Keenan and I It was incredible were like timing. We were running by. late. They happened to be there. Yeah. We're like, oh, hey. Anyways, 
just wanted to give them a shout out because it was wonderful chatting with them. Um, let's do our warm up. So this painting is a loose painting and it is, um, so we're gonna practice wet on wet technique, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Wet on wet is just when the paper of the, what the surface of the paper is wet and then you put more wet onto it. It could be wet either through wet paint or through just water. So if I take my round six and I get an area wet and I drop in some color, it's just gonna move and it's gonna create how dare you, Jar? <laughs> jar, get it Jar together. just moved. What is up with that? What the? And you can also do water drops in there too to make it move more. It's just gonna create different textures and lines. It's really fun. It's one of my favorite techniques, um, but you need to really embrace the accidental element with this, which means some things are just gonna pop out and happen and you gotta embrace it, okay? You can also do the same thing with just a wash already. So if I already have wet paint in here and I put it down and then I drop in some color, see? So that, both, you could either do water first or water and color first, whatever you want. That's my favorite. Yeah. Some color onto a wash. It's so good. I like to do water drops in mine. Yeah. So we're gonna be playing, you, you can see we have a lot of different um, lines, textures, funky things going on, drips. I'm doing all of that. So this is a really fun project to really just let loose and play around. Um, the other thing that I wanna show you guys is just brush strokes. Um, because with your round sixes and your round twos or rounds in general, they have a bigger belly at the bottom and then they narrow in at the top. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to get thin lines or thick lines, depending on just how you hold your brush and your pressure. So if you want thicker lines, so usually when I'm like filling in the background, um, I will use my round six and hold it more horizontally and use the entire side of the brush to paint. Because it just fills this space faster uh, if you're doing little detail areas, you can still use your round six and just kind of hold it more vertical and do that. Or same thing with the round two. So if you guys aren't familiar with these two brushes, just take a minute to kind of play with them. See how thick you can get your lines, see how thin you can get your lines. Maybe try it at doing both, where you start thin, and then you press hard and get thick, and then thin again. Just kind of play around, because uh, when we do kind of our detailing inside our dandelions, we're gonna be playing with thinner lines, but then our background is thicker. What else did I wanna show you? I think that's all I really need to talk about. So we can get going. Perfect. Okay, grab a pencil, and you can make this dandelion as big or small as you want. That's why I kind of like freehand loose paintings, and actually you'll see coming up that I'm gonna be playing with um, different sizes. So I think in July, um, well we kind of already did this in May, but we'll be doing like five by seven projects on the nine by 12. So just because your paper is nine by 12, that does not mean you have to fill the entire thing and it has, everything has to be nine by 12. You guys can break these down. Um, and I actually usually don't cut my paper when I break it down. I like to just paint on the nine by 12 smaller because then I can like cut things off if I make a mistake. Oh, you know, crop technique. Yeah, crop it down or whatever. Oh. So you guys can make this as big or small as you want. I'll probably do like an eight by 10 size. So I'm, my wash is not gonna be going from edge to edge. I'm going to have an uneven wash background because I like that look. But you guys can do whatever you want because it's your project. It's your world. It's your world that you're making here. Okay, so for my dandelions, I'm doing two that are like fuzzy and then one that is not fuzzy. Those are the technical terms. Yes, they are. <laughs> so I'm just going to do one slightly off center, taller, kind of right here. I'm just doing a circle. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. 
and then I'm going to do a circle in the middle of that because that's going to be the center of my dandelion. And then I'm going to go down and out a little bit. Another one here. Circle here. And if you guys aren't familiar with drawing or sketching, I always recommend you, when you sketch or draw things, do so lightly. It, when you press really hard, it's such a commitment of like, that's what it has to be. So I always tend to do really light pressure, multiple lines, that kind of thing, because um, then I can cover them up or erase them or whatever. So if you're struggling with drawing, that's just a little tip. Um, and then I'm gonna have the stem kind of coming out this way, right here. And I'm just gonna kind of have them centrally meet. They don't have to be like on one plant. Cause as you can see, it kind of just gets like muddy down here. I did that on purpose. Oh. See how it's not like perfectly defined. Mm -hmm. I like to give myself a little bit of room to like make my own decisions, you know? I do, nice. And then for the leaf, what I'm gonna do for this one coming out is I'm gonna do just a straight line. And then I'm gonna kinda like do ocean waves around it. So it's gonna start here, ocean wave, ocean wave, and then on the other side. Do you see what I mean by ocean wave? How it's like that. Du, du, du. You mean the leaf shape you're drawing? <laughs> Well, I mean, like, it comes to a point. It's like when you were little and drew ocean waves. I I see a leaf. <laughs> but, yeah, I... I <laughs> Gosh, dang it, Keenan. Ocean waves like this. You know when you would draw water? When you draw... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I I'm doing that. that. Okay. Just on its side. As a leaf. As a leaf. Got it. <laughs> okay. And, again... There's many different, I mean, nature is kind of random and weird. So if your leaf looks a little bit funky, it's, it's right. There's something out there that looks like that. And then I'm going to do one that's not in seed phase. So, and we did this with the Daisy, De Daisy Delight tutorial. I went over flower shapes a little bit more. But basically, I'm going to do like, uh, how do I say this? What shape is that? Kanan? It looks like the shape of a skirt. Oh my gosh, I was going to say skirt, but then I was so afraid you were going to make fun of me. No, it looks like I a... thought you would be like, oh, you're drawing a flower using that skirt <laughs> shape instead of a flower no, shape? No, <laughs> It makes me think of like the 50s poodle skirts. Totally. So you're going to kind of do that skirt shape, and then you can just go in and put in the petals. Like that. And then um, with these flowers, it has a thicker stem where it kind of meets up and then thins out. Okay, so this is our basic shape, our basic subject that we're sketching in. I then am going to just paint around this. That's our next step. And that's how we're gonna define these shapes a little bit better, but you just need a general idea. All right, now I'm gonna have my round six. And I'm gonna start on step two, which is just painting around what we just drew. So you can start with water, and I'll do both, where I'll start with water or paint, but I'll start with water. And then I'm gonna just grab color and drop it in. And if you need help moving it, you would be like, come on, little guy, move around for me. So, and what I usually like to do is I usually like to drop in color and then use that same paint to kind of spread it around. As you spread it, do you add more water occasionally? Yes, because sometimes your brush dries out. So if I were to just keep going like this, you see how my brush is starting to get like a rough texture? Mm -hmm. That's why I'll just dampen my brush you don't want your brush to be dripping though because then that's going to be too much water. And then like, now that it's wet, I can drop in more color. I can really get, you can do water drops. And I love doing that because it just kind of like, 
I mean, look how cool already these textures are. And I, I just know. find those more visually interesting than like a totally smooth wash. But there are places for both. So I'm not saying one, I'm not saying one is better than the other. But this one is cooler. It is better. <laughs> but Keenan can say that. Yeah, I can say that. Wait, why can I say it? I, I don't know. I can though. You're you right. can though. You're not wrong. Am I ever wrong? <laughs> Not that I know of. All you have to do is just say macaroons. Steve. I've just been adding <laughs> words to the dictionary on our dictionary, <laughs> Steve. Perfect. All right, so this is just that same technique over and over again. Now, you guys feel free to make your own color choices here. Um, if you add more yellow, you are going to um, make it look more green, right? So if I were to do yellow on top of here. Now, personally, I didn't do too much yellow around this on my reference photo because I wanted the yellow dandelion petals and the yellow centers to stand out a little bit more. That's why I mostly did blue. But this is your painting and you can do whatever you want. And also if you want like more of a um, purpley, if you have the subscription box it also comes with violet in there which if you add the violet to the sea blue it actually makes more of a true blue um, which is a beautiful color and I can show you guys that too. Now if you get the kit it's just going to come with the sea blue and the yellow and the white but if you have the subscription box you should have a bottle of violet and if you just mix that in there look at this color. Sarah question. Yeah. Would you be willing to shift I think it'd be great if you shifted your paper, reference card, and tray a little to your left. So they can see the mixing? So they can see the mixing and all the other things you'd like them to see too. Like that? Is that uh -huh. enough? That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So, you guys play with color choices, play with mixing different colors. It's your painting, it's your world that you're making, so have fun with it. Now, I kind of just sketched out the stem in a thin line when I was doing my stems. So I'm just like pretending that the one line is thicker. Does that make sense? And I'm just painting around it. Yes. Do some water drops. And this is, the, this is the great thing about negative space painting is you can just adjust things as you go. For example, I'm looking at this ball of fuzz right here and it seems a little, well, it seems a little wonky, which isn't the worst thing. Nature is wonky. But if I'm like, you know what? This seems like a weird growth right here. What do I do about it? Oh, you just come in and paint, paint more around it and just kind of sh reshape it. Does that make sense? Yep. You guys can just reshape it. And I'm not doing a perfectly smooth circle. You can see it's kind of jagged. Um, that's because I really wanted to show the different seeds, like get that feeling of layers of seeds. But sometimes they are perfectly rounded depending on how full they are too. So it's not wrong. And now, I'm just filling out the back. Again, you guys can decide how far out you want to go. I'm going to drop in some color here. And you can see I'm not being meticulous in terms of like, I'm going to drop this color here for this effect. Like, I'm really just like messing around. And I'm trying to work quickly because usually if you work quickly, you get some different, um, the bleeds happen to be a little bit better. Now one thing that I am trying to do though is as I get towards the edge of my paper, I'm using mostly water because I want it to kind of like fade out. I want it to be the darkest values in the center and then as it works, it way, works the way out, it gets to a lighter value. If you guys have like sea salt, that might be fun to throw in here too. I love sea salt. It does some really cool stuff. On paintings, on chocolate wherever. On chocolate chip cookies? Yes. Oh, yes. Or caramel? Mm. 
my mother-in-law was in town and she made some caramel candy, put little flecks of sea salt on top. It was divine. Well, she's, she's excellent. She is excellent. Drop some more. Do like green hints in here because I kind of like how that green. Do you know what these kind of remind me of at this stage? Lollipops. Um, no. Dang it. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, oh gosh, the Lorax. The, the trefula. Whole, yeah. The trefula trees. I don't know what that is. Are they I know what the Lorax is, but I don't know. I mean, I've only read or seen the Lorax once. Well, the Lorax speaks for the trees. And what's happening is a man is cutting down all of the trefula trees to make a thneed. And now, and then he destroys a thneed. I love that. I yeah. think they're called truffula trees. Truffula trees. Nailed it. That's what they look like to me. Monterey cypress. Oh, a Monterey cypress that is thought to have inspired the truffula trees. Oh, really? So there's really? actually something that's similar to it. A Monterey cypress? Uh huh. So let me see if I can get a Google. On the old Monterey Cypress. Let's look that up. Maybe we'll like pop a picture up so you guys can see what we're talking about. How about Came up. They kind of look. So, Let me know. see. I mean, I'll I'll be the decider. Okay. No. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> I just. That could have inspired it, though. I, I don't. I mean, I'm not Dr. Seuss. I don't know why. Yeah, that's true. I'm not either. Hmm. Michael, if you edit this, or Chris, whoever, will you throw up a picture of one of those trees so they know what we're talking about? And a truffula. And a truffula tree. You'll and comparison. just put them next to each yeah. other. Also, I want to say that when you're doing these thin stems, you your stems might not be perfectly even all the way through. That's okay. Don't let things like that stress you out because it really, it's not a huge deal, especially on this type of painting where it's just like fun and loose and playing around. Don't get caught up on things like that. I just don't want it to deter you from just like all of the fun. Like look at, look at this right here. Look at how that blue went through that green or how this turned from like that blue to that turquoise to this light green like I don't know watercolor is just so fun that I, I, I want you guys to love it like, I love it <laughs> <laughs> so don't get mad at yourself because it's just watercolor doing what it's supposed to do and we gotta we gotta love it for it you know The explosions and the fun, the way they combine together, they just make it feel dreamy. Yeah. You know, and that's my mm -hmm. favorite part. And I think that, like, what I love about these, like, loose paintings like this is, like, the nature of how watercolor works, especially with the liquids and the type of paper that we're using. All of our paintings are going to look so different from each other. Um, because we're color mixing, because we're doing blooms, and Canson kind of tends to bloom up a little bit 
um, easier than other paper and it also works a lot better with liquids as opposed to pigment based paints. So I've, I've been playing with this um, and just so you guys know is um, if you're getting frustrated with, with what's happening, like the different textures that you're getting, you want to pay attention to what material, materials you're using with what. I've noticed that the liquid does better on Canson than on other um, types of paper. And I've also noticed that pigment doesn't do as well for me on Canson as the liquid does. Hmm. It just um, doesn't disperse the same. Hmm. That's all the science I know about it. It's a good science. <laughs> it's a good amount. Science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, all of that to say um, that if you're getting frustrated, it could possibly just be the materials that you're using. And I, I am a huge believer in just finding out what works for you and that's what you use. And it's not like, if you like Canton and Liquid, it's not like you're better or less than someone who likes pigment base paints or tube paints or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. let people create how they wanna create. Different things are gonna speak better to you. I've always been a fan of this because I love blooms and I love color. So that's why I'm like dye base paints and Canton paper. I love those. But that might not be what speaks to you and that's totally okay. Okay, now I'm kind of like just finishing up my edges here. And if you want to like if maybe some of your blooms got too, too edgy, you know, too hard. Too, too edgy. Too edgy. Sometimes I'll go in with the damp, damp brush and just kind of like move stuff around. Now I want you to know that by doing that, there is a good chance that I will be creating more blooms in this process because blooms happen from uneven water disbursement and different drying times. So it's possible that I'm creating more. That's okay. I just, I guess what I'm trying to do is I don't necessarily want my drops of color to feel like polka dots. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I don't want it to be like round here, round here, round here. Unless I was trying to do that on purpose, but I wasn't trying to do that. And so I'm kind of just blending some of these colors out so then it feels more like smooth transitions as opposed to hmm. dots. I hadn't even noticed it looking starting to look like dots. Yeah. And again, I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm not saying uh, if you want that, it, your painting's going to look bad. I'm not saying that at all. I just know that our brain starts to pick up pattern. And unless I'm purposely trying to create a pattern, I don't want my brain to like be seeing something that I didn't mean it to see, you know? Yep. So that's why I'm kind of going through and blending. Also, you will notice we, we did do a lot of paint and wash. Your paper is probably starting to warp a little bit, totally normal. Uh, if you want to use painter's tape to tape it down, that could help with it. I usually don't mind it. Now I feel like it's less polka dotty. You showed me some paper the other day that was super thick, like cardboard. Uh huh. Compared to this, does that, or compare this stuff compared to that, does it bend when you watercolor with it as well, or is it? Much no. Different? So I, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> I got some Arches cold press 300 pound paper, and it for real felt. It's thick. It it's feels so like thick. cardboard because I just wanted to see if I were to do a ton of water on it, what it would do. It did have a curve to it, so it did bend, yeah. but it don't bend in the same way. Like the whole paper does a slight bend, Rather where this one, wavy. this one kind of has waves in it. Okay. And even with like, um, and this is pretty standard, depending on how much water you're using, even with 100% um, cotton paper, which this is not 100% cotton, but even with some that are 100% cotton, um, you still get the waves. So I've used other brands that are 100% cotton, 140 pound, and I still have to iron them to get them to flatten out when I'm done painting on them. Interesting. Yeah. So 
it's a common thing. But if it, but I will say that because this is not 100% cotton, it does tend to warp a little bit more. So if you're getting super frustrated with that, maybe try a different heavier weight or um, a one that is 100% cotton because it would um, take the water a little bit better. Okay, that was step two. That was a really long step. Mm. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step three. So we're gonna do like the center of the dandelions and our leaves. So I'm gonna switch to my round two and I'm gonna grab my yellow. And I'm just going to do a little yellow center here. And this center is off center on my second one, but no harm, no foul. Just move my center, not a big deal. So now there's my center. And you don't wanna put in the leaves yet until it is completely dry around the flower. So I'm gonna pause to do the edge ones. I can do the ones in the middle. But if, if the edge is still wet and you touch that yellow against that like blue, it's just gonna bleed together. Which again, is not a bad thing if, you're, if you don't mind your painting being a little bit like funky. You know what I mean? Like I funky really, cool. yeah, I kind of really like it when colors accidentally bleed together because you get some really interesting textures. If yeah. you don't want it to bleed together, then give it a second to dry. Like things would be hard to plan on purpose. Yeah. Okay. And, ooh. Okay, I just realized something, which is my leaf here, I want it to be like a light green, but if you look at the color that's right next to it to the right, it's gonna look like this green. So it doesn't, it's not gonna feel, it's gonna feel even because of the colors. So, not a problem. I'll just go in and do another wash to the right of this kind of getting rid of that green so then when I paint this leaf green it will pop. Does that make sense? It totally makes sense. That way they're more separate. Yes, just to kind of separate them visually a little bit. It's a really cool wave leaf. <laughs> wow, your your leaf looks like an ocean wave. Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> I just feel like that's like the easiest way to like talk about what I'm doing, but it's fine. Kanan just making fun of my teaching choices. Am I making fun? I don't know. Are you serious or are you joking? I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I, I, I don't think you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to let that dry. While it's drying, I'm going to put in the vein, which is just this line here. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. And we just gotta give it a minute to dry. Sweet. I think we're dry enough now to, um, to mess with, to, to play around. So you can kind of play with your centers, make them as round as you want. You can see that my pencil line is still, you can still kind of see my pencil line through my yellow center. I am not one that gets stressed out about pencil lines. I, it doesn't bother me at all. If it bothers you, then go ahead and erase everything before you paint, but like, or just like understand that that's, I feel like it makes it unique to the, to the painting. I feel like it makes it, I don't know, Mistakes aren't really mistakes unless you view them as mistakes. I like that. You know? Yeah. Because like if somebody's like, why is there a pencil line there? I, I as the artist, can be like, because I wanted it to be there. And I have every right to say that. Yeah. So just giving you guys that power <laughs> to do whatever you want. Okay. So isn't that I've heard the same thing about weeds. Weeds are just plants that grow where you don't want them to grow. Yes. Is that true though? I mean, dandelions are a weed. <laughs> so. But what if you like dandelions? I mean, I love dandelions. My girls love dandelions because they can blow all of those seeds <laughs> all over the yard <laughs> and they'll just grow back <laughs> by the hundreds. But 
Are they, is weed a technical type of plant? I don't think so. I think it's just a name. I need, I need my mom here who's all about I'm gardening. I'm the word weed is I in need, the dictionary. I mean, it's unfortunate that Michael happens to not be filming this I one. I know, he knows he could all tell these me things. all of the different parts of the different things. Kenan, can you be better? I, well, you just go get a biology degree, you know? I might as well. Please go get a biology degree while we're painting. I'll just go, you know what? I got You're plenty of class. time. They're like, why are you here? We're like, I film tutorials, and the artist never knows what she's talking about. <laughs> so I have to know all of I the to, things. I have to get a biology degree. I have to get a music degree. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mix my sea blue with yellow to get this kind of light green, depending on how blue or green you want it to be. Um, if you want it to be a really like lime green, do more yellow. If you want it to be more of a blue green, then add more of the blue. So I have my green here, and I'm just going to do my green wash. And if you want to paint through your stem, you can, or avoid your stem, so that's a nice hard line, you can do that. I'm just painting through it because I like loose things. I'm also gonna drop in a little bit of darker green here and there. It's when it hits the edge of your wash, it's probably gonna fuzz and bleed. We're cool with that. We're into that here. If you don't like that, then leave a really thin white line in between the two spaces. But I, again, I don't mind when things blend or kind of get messy. There are three definitions of the word weed. Okay. Three separate definitions. I don't know which one came first. But here they are. Are you ready? I'm ready. Unless you're going to teach something. I'm just putting green in the stems. That's it. Okay. Here are the definitions. Weed, number one. A plant that tends to grow thickly where it is not wanted and to choke out more desirable plants. Okay. Two. To clear of or remove weeds or something harmful interior or superfluous to get rid of or out the troublemakers. Okay which makes sense. Like, yeah. I'm gonna go weed the garden. Right? Yes. Uh, weed number three, mourning clothes. Like, to mourn someone or something. Mourning clothes uh -huh. used in plural, widows. Oh. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay, so then, from what it sounds like, is if you like, when going back to mistakes, mm -hmm. It's like, if you like them and, and embrace them, then they're not mistakes. Right. The same with dandelions. If you like dandelions, you don't mind that they grow in your yard. You can just let them be. Yep. And they're doing what they're supposed to do. And bonus, if you don't have a green thumb, they'll just come back no matter what. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I grew these. I planted all I of these. I did this. See my yard full of dandelions? Do you dandelions? know how many stems of dandelions <laughs> I blew to make wishes? All of them came true. <laughs> Look at the parallels here between dandelions and watercolor. I know. It's so incredible. Great. So great. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. I put in my green stems. Um, now I'm going to put in the color around the dandelion. So if you look at fuzzes, I'm yeah. on a <laughs> dandelion fuzz balls. Dandelion fuzz balls. What if it's just the dandelion's seed? Okay. If the dandelion's, dandelions in seeds. seed form. You could say dead dandelions, wow. that, but it's not so as nice. Pretty. They are so pretty. So. Okay. Either way, the seeds are tiny little, like mini little umbrellas, fuzz umbrellas that are all around, okay? Which means, but the thing that you have to remember, you guys, is that dandelions are three-dimensional, which means the seeds are going out from the side, but there's also some in the front, okay? So it goes all around the center of this dandelion, which means you're gonna have white mark, white fuzz in the front all around, okay? So it's possible that even some of the white is covered up the center because it's in front like that. So if you wanna take your bleed proof white and do a couple of those fuzzes, you can. I have noticed, and it also depends on how full the, the, the ball, fuzz ball is. On some that are a little bit not as full, <laughs> Some that aren't as full, you're gonna be able to see through them more clearly because that white fuzz is not blocking your view. So if you guys want to have kind of more bare dandelions and you're gonna do more of this blue paint that I'm gonna put in here. If you want your dandelions to be really full and feel like there's a lot of white fuzz on that little plant, then um, you would leave a lot more white. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round two and I'm just going to kind of paint around my center like this. And then I'm going to start like, um, because the, how do I explain this? You're painting around the white seeds that are around it. So you're not going to be making the shapes of those seeds because we're going to be painting around them. Um, so I'm kind of just painting as if in between stems, okay? So I'm painting as if I'm in between stems. And then also they end at different spots. So there are some that are taller, there are some that, um, and also because it's three dimensional, there are some that are gonna end over here because they're in the front and then in the back, they would end over here. So I'm just, I don't know if that makes any sense, but. I mean, it does make sense, especially as you Paint them. Show it. Okay, so it's more a, like dashes and spaces that we're painting in between. So don't feel like you have to actually paint the shapes of these seats. That's not what we're doing. We're doing the sections between them, which means they're going to be kind of funky. Some are going to be small, some are bigger chunks. Again, it depends on how um, fuzzy and thick you want your dandelion to seem. And you can also take this opportunity to reshape your dandelion. If you're like, you know what, this just got a little bit funky out here. That's cool looking. And I'm gonna do a little bit darker center here around my... I found a really great quote while I was looking for dandelion anatomy. All right, love it. Let's hear um, it. It's from Gray's Anatomy, so that may have some reason as to why I found it. But it's great. It goes it goes along with watercolor and dandelions again. Okay. So the picture is dandelions as seed. So dead dandelion. Okay. And it says, at some point, you just have to let go. Move on. Because no matter how painful it is, it's the only way we grow. But if you think about it as watercolor and it, something accidental happens, you just got to... Let it go. You gotta let it go. Let the dandelion seed flow. Look at that. Let, let it grow. flow. You get better, you let see it go. It, uh, let it flow. Let it go. <laughs> and I'm kind of smoothing out the edge. I don't want it to be a perfect circle, but I also don't want it to be like crazy jagged. You know what I mean? Because I still yeah. want to keep the round feel. Okay. So there's one. I'm gonna darken this a little bit more. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this other one. So it's kind of painting in between the seeds. Again, I'm kind of doing it at random. If you want yours to feel more empty, you would have more blue. If you want it to feel more full, you could have white. And if you're stressed about this part, the wonderful thing is we have bleed proof white in this in this kit and box. So if you do too much blue, not a problem. Because you just take your bleed proof white, Fix paint it. over it when it dries, not a problem at all. Oh, so you think oh, you'd say paint over all of it. Not paint over all of it, but paint over the sections that are have too much blue in it. Gotcha, and gotcha. I'm gonna take the white and add on top of this too. So you'll see what I'm talking about. And this one just got so like jagged. Can you paint on bleed proof white? Yes. Does it reconstitute if it gets wet? <sighs> Sometimes. Really? So with bleed proof white, the nice thing about it is it's a great way to like add highlights, add mistakes, whatever. Um, but it does leave a different, because it's opaque, if you mix it with colors and paint with it, it's going to have more of a, an opaque look than a transparent look. Yeah. Also, if it's really watered down when you do layer it to cover something else, then um, that color underneath will kind of show through a little bit. So it depends on how thick you're using it as well. Interesting. Um, and if you paint on top of the bleed proof white after you put bleed proof white on there too, it will mix with the color so it's not going to have the same effect as watercolor paper because gotcha. it's an opaque white paint. Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. So while that dries, I'm going to give that a second to dry. I did some like 
long stems here because I want to make this feel messy and this is feeling really like there are four plants you know one two three four I want to like mess that up so I'm just going to do some stems all around using dark value and white so I'm going to start with my dark value since I'm not doing my white yet and I'm just going to and you want to kind of like these are thicker because I'm using my round six. If you want to keep them nice and thin, you can use your round two. And again, mess with the heights. See how, not meaning to, these are all the same height. So I gotta get in there and be like, this one is long. This one is also long. And it's basically, I'm trying to mess up this area so it doesn't feel like so perfect for little things growing out of a plant or growing out of like a crack or something. And you can have them go um, across, you know, they don't have, have to all be the same direction. And I'm gonna have to cover that up with white, which is fine. Okay. And this is the wonderful thing about loose painting. Let's say you do this, you do this part, and you're like, I did that way, like there are too many black stems going on. Just take your paintbrush and just do another layer. And then it's like the stems were never even there. Dang. So this is why this painting is so fun to me because like you really can like do stuff that maybe you didn't necessarily want to do and like just adjust. Okay. Now, so now we're moving on to step four. So I'm gonna grab my bleed proof white and my round two. And I'm gonna do some white fuzzies on my dandelion and flying off of my dandelion. Again, please make sure that your background is dry. So like this little like grass long thing that I put through my dandelion, I don't like it. I'm gonna cover it. Or maybe I felt like my center was too dark and I need some white in there. Drop some white. So I can't see what your painting looks like. So this is where you kind of have to like take a look at what you've painted and mess with it. Again, you can put some white, maybe you can put some paint back on it if you don't like the white part. So I'm gonna do some along the edges. But again, pay attention to your patterning and your rhythm of these marks. Now I'm gonna do some flyaways. So it's gonna be like. And if you want the direction to be really strong, you can do it in a straight line. Maybe you want it to be like general where it's just like softly like poofing out. Then you wouldn't, you would kind of have them going all around. I kind of want them to feel like they're flowing to the right to make my viewers' eyes continue this line that I have going. But I'm gonna put a little bit over here so it's not like, Mrr. like I want, I don't want this side to be totally forgotten, but I don't want it to um, attract too much attention. So I'm gonna have most of them going off to the right. And for visual interest, maybe we want some kind of coming down here. Who knows, wind is crazy, you know? Wind is crazy. You never know. I feel like I got excited about that. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Wind is crazy. I don't know. Keenan's very passionate about that. Yeah, now, wind. I also did some splatters here a little bit, just again, for fun. So you're gonna take your round six, grab some white, and I'm testing it before I put it on my paper, just for a little tiny flex. Really, because splatters are fun. I love it. Now, I'm going to take my round two and do some white kind of grass stems coming out. A 
If you're, there is a balance of bleed proof white though of how much moisture you want to have because if it's, there's no water in there, it's not gonna move. It's gonna be like this dashed line right here where if you want a smooth line, you gotta have water on it. But if you have too much water, it's not gonna show up. So just kind of play with it. I like that dashed line. The dashed line? Yeah, it's cool. And if you like that texture, then like you can totally embrace it, not get a lot of water and just be like, there's a rough line, there's a rough line. If you want it smoother, grab a little bit more water. And then the very last thing I did is on some of these little flyaway seeds, I added the little stems. So they have the white fuzz top. And I'm gonna go in and I'm just going to do, oh, that was a water drop. Just gonna go in and do tiny little stems on these seeds that are flying away. You don't have to do it on all of them. And if it's on a dark background, it might not even pop up. I just did them here and there. And that's it. Nice. That's our project. That looks so good. Isn't it fun? Yes. Ah. Oh. Okay. In the beginning when you drew those donuts, I was really <laughs> concerned. Kenan's like, this isn't. This is where it all ends. You guys, you have to know that Kenan has come to me and he's just like, I'll have to say that while you were painting that. I was like, there is no way this is going to turn out. <laughs> <laughs> so that just proves that like you cannot judge a painting halfway. You can't judge a painting from the beginning. You can't judge it when you're halfway through. You have to give it a chance. And maybe you're completely done and you're like, I still don't know about it. Walk away from it for a day and then come back to it. And then maybe if you've walked away from it so many times and so many days and you still hate it, it's just a piece of paper. And all you have to do is just toss it in the trash, start over, and it's not a big deal. But give your paintings a chance to be something before you decide that they're not. Uh, if you need any of these products or supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. If you want to tag us on Instagram and so we can see what you're doing, we would love to see it. It's hashtag letsmakeart um, or tag us at let's go make art. We have a watercolor group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you want to see what other people are painting, um, Keenan, thanks for thanks for chatting with me. You're welcome. <laughs> we had thanks a good time. The, thanks for the invite. <laughs> And uh, I think that's all I got to say. Check. All right. Bye, you guys.